Joining us here at Talking Mission. My name is Brad Murray and I'm with Chad Berninski. So, Chad, we got chatting and you work with an organization. What do you call the organization? It's called the Great Commission Foundation. Okay, great. Uh, chat about how you got working with the Great Commission. Sure. So, I, um, I grew up in a Christian home and uh, my dad was a pastor, both my mm -hmm. brothers are pastors. And, uh, I went the business route. Okay. And, uh, a few years ago, my wife and I, I decided that long-term ministry was was the plan for our family, mm -hmm. and it was time to look at that. Mm -hmm. uh, we explored long-term missions. Uh, we thought that that was the route for us, uh, but we've got some challenges in our family with, with our kids, and we explored that for about a year and found you know, it just wasn't the right path for us, at least at that time. Right. Uh, more questions than answers uh, as we came through that process. and. Uh, but we did decide to uh, start working with our local church. I spent a couple of years as executive pastor with the church and, and helping. And uh, uh, through that time, we kept exploring. And um, this opportunity came up uh, with someone who had uh, founded the Great Commission Foundation and needed someone uh, to come alongside and bring a little bit of structure and systems. And, and it seemed to be a good fit. For me. So how you been enjoying that, bringing in the structures and the systems? I like it. I that's like you. It. That that's me. Yeah, it's uh, it's been good. I I, um, I really enjoy being able to. I, I like team. Yeah. Uh, and I've got a great team. Oh, cool. So it's been it's been a lot of fun. That is really neat. So now uh, looking back, do you feel like the full circles come where you kind of like you went through all that to be where you are right now? We don't know what's going to happen in the future, but for today, of course. You know, it, it's interesting because. You don't know, and as yeah. you're going through it, the, the decisions seem hard, and the yeah. the path seems uneasy, and yet yeah. here I am, able to work with over 400 ministries that are doing long-term missions and being able to help them, but using the gifts and skills that I've learned from the business world. Yeah, I'm doing that. Well, that's kind of cool. So. Um, Share with us a bit about uh, the organization. Yeah, so the Great Commission Foundation provides a bit of a administrative backbone for, for ministries. It might be individuals who are on mission, it might be small nonprofits. Uh, we're working with larger charities as well, uh, where we do the, the, all the donations, receiving, the bookkeeping, the accounting, the government compliance, so they can focus on the front end of doing the ministry, and we focus on the back end. Right. So what, you know, obviously like, you know, I can kind of relate to, this is a weak area of mine. Even <laughs> I'm in business and this is still a weak area of mine. <laughs> um, so what are some of the, what's happened? Like you were talking about actually where people can thrive. Now tell us a story or two. Yeah, I really believe, I believe too many situations, people are trying to do everything. Um, and they, they set out to achieve a goal, but the reality is there's there's compliance and there's accounting and there's stuff that has to be done and and they just they struggle with it. Yeah. So I, I can think of uh, we have a, a great couple who's working in Nigeria right now. Uh, used to be construction. Uh, she was a teacher. Uh, they set out to do this beautiful ministry where they're right. working with churches, working with schools, bringing bringing um, curriculum to the school. And their gifting is not in paperwork and, and bookkeeping and right. things like that. And they're they're on the ground. They it's difficult to do all that stuff, but they've got a lot of Canadian donors who want to support what they're doing. So we've been able to step in and allow them to to just do beautiful ministry, wonderful ministry, focusing on the the relationships, the connections, the things that they're right. gifted at, and letting us take care of them. Well, so when you're halfway around the world to start doing the, all these other things, the time that it takes is significant. Yeah. Really, it really is. And I know my wife was doing the book. Well, uh, a couple of churches that we've been with in the past, she did uh, books for you know a uh, few years each. And you know, one was a little bigger, and that was obviously a lot of work. And then the other one, smaller, and 
um, it seemed like it was no less work. <laughs> <That's true. Yeah. laughs> and uh, but it was, you know, um, it just it, it just seems to me if you could just take that section off of a person, you just free up. Like even being in the trades, I know that uh, if somebody puts in 10 hours doing some home renovation work, yeah. it's not the same as a professional doing the same thing. That's they true. think they just save 10 hours of pay <laughs> of paying somebody. They might have saved three hours of paying mm. somebody. Because the guy would have been done maybe in three, sure. four, five. You know, and it's just that's you know, just the way it is, right? But the same thing I'm thinking here. We got your people who are just kind of like hammering it out yeah. for a purpose, right? For yeah. a purpose. Uh, no, that's kind of cool, actually. You have another testimony for us. Well, yeah, I think of uh, we have uh, a large ministry here in Canada. Um, it's all volunteer run. Right, right. Uh, the board is volunteer run. Everything's volunteer. Uh, but they they have people who, who are in, uh, they send about 36 teams every year from churches right across the country okay. that are going to El Salvador, okay. building homes, building, right. um, working with community leaders and things like that. And they need a structure. They, yeah. they do, you know, there's probably about a couple million dollars of revenue every year right. in Canada for all of these teams to go and do what they're doing. And, I mean, each team probably has a dozen people at least. So you think of the people, um, you know, leaving their, their work and things like that to go and give their time. And, right. And, and they need structure. Yeah. So we're yeah. able to, you know, my team is gifted in yeah. administration. So right. we're able to provide that structure so they can continue to send teams and more and more teams every year and be and not worry about being bogged down or having to put staff in place to try to manage that stuff, which you may not be as experienced as. Well, that's the other thing. I'm finding a lot more and more churches are unable to take on these extra responsibilities. If somebody has an idea, whether it's national or international, they just don't have the wherewithal, the skill, the energy, the manpower. And a lot of times they're trying to refer to an organization like you. They want to actually work in partnership. Are you finding you're working in partnership with churches in these situations? Yeah, yeah. we're seeing much more collaboration. Cool. Um, and, and especially with church plants. You right. Know, when they're getting off the ground, they don't have the resources yeah. of people and things like that. So, And it's, again, it's that worry of how do we do this? And yeah. We just take that pressure off their hands so they can focus again on on just being in their community and yeah. loving, loving the people that are that are coming. Let me ask you a question. If a small church or an organization uh, has taken on their own number from the government, what do they call that number? Uh, charity, registered charity number. Uh, that's a hard thing to remember. <laughs> uh, so they got their own registered charity number, but now they're finding the burden to be a little heavy. Are they able to call you again? Yeah, the, the beautiful thing in Canada is that a registered charity can stay active even if they're filing a zero dollar tax return. Okay. So we work with several charities who've just decided, you know what, together we're, we're better. We're, we're stronger together. You guys do what you do really well, so we're not going to worry about it. And so they'll they'll file a zero dollar tax return, um, but but we don't get involved in telling them, you know, how they should be running their ministry. Um, but we can provide that charitable oversight to make sure that they're being run in the right compliance with CRA and with the right rules and, yeah. and not worry about it. Yeah, I remember uh, one of my first years of the business and uh, taking my stuff to my accountant and he's looking over my books and he goes, that is actually technically allowed. But for some reason it's a red flag and they'll mm. decide, to, might decide, might decide to audit you. Is it worth it? <laughs> right. No. <laughs> right. But in stuff like that, that advice is just, like I'll never go without an accountant. Like for me, like I just, there's no way. And I'm a little guy. And so, you know, we're trying to do things and it's just getting, I know they're getting more stringent and more, you gotta be more careful. So I think that's really cool. You know, I, I really appreciate your time here, uh, Chad, and uh, just sharing with us. I really love this organization. I just kind of like what you're doing. Um, is there anything you want to share about it before I... No, I just appreciate the opportunity. We yeah. we love what we do. That's cool. And, uh, you know, our, our our thing really is to help ministry still be cool and use our gifts. You know, for my team, this is their ministry. Yeah. They could be working in doctor's offices and, and there's, there's beautiful things in that, but, yeah. but they want to be part of ministry happening. Yeah. And, 
and this is their way of doing it. And so uh, we love to we love to work with ministries. We take the posture of, of serving, yep. and uh, it's uh, it's just great. Well, it's got to be exciting too over the years to see organizations just grow and thrive. Yeah. Sometimes they go on their own at some point, sometimes they just stick with you, Absolutely. whatever they do. But it's like, you know, that's an exciting thing. That, that would be actually kind of cool, except for all the uh, numbers. Like, I just, <laughs> I would round everything down to the nearest 50. You know, you don't want me in charge of your books. Oh, eh? <laughs> but, uh, anyways, uh, Chad, I really appreciate your Thanks, time bro. here. Thank you for coming. So, again, this is uh, Talking Missions with Brad Murray. And, uh, be on mission, live on purpose. I gotta keep that in my own life. So, but it's true. We gotta be on mission, live on purpose, and so stay focused. And if you have a um, an organization, or you're thinking about trying to get something, give one of his people a call. They'll be on the website, and uh, just check them out. And then they might be able to say what you need to do next, help you out, get you started, and, and tell you what's 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 what. Right? As he's been sharing. So, if you like what we're offering, do the likes, reviews. If you don't mind. Saying Oh, yeah. reviews, shares, all those kind of things. Help, help us to get the word out there. There may be somebody, send this, forward this to somebody who's in these kind of question areas. So we just want to thank you again, and we will see you next time. Blessings.